This movie is produced for the aim of contribution of improvement of the quality of service and professional knowledge and skill of personnel working at the food and beverage service sections of accommodation and eating drinking establishments serving in the tourism sector within the framework of national occupational standards by the Director General of Research and Training at the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. In the area of food and beverage services of the hospitality sector, professional and of high quality services are just as important as tasteful and freshly prepared food and beverages. For guest pleasure, reflection of the management culture and increase in profits, huge responsibility falls on the employees of the food and beverage industry. With this training program, we will remind you of the role of the employees of the food and beverage sector who are expected to be hardworking, cautious, smiling, detail-oriented, energetic and disciplined all the time. As well, there will be a description of your job and what to pay attention during your personal preparation for your job. Later on, we will go into the details of mise en place service which involves pre-service work. Together, we will learn and remember the basic service techniques, how we serve the guests, how the relationship between employees and the guest needs to be like, how to take a bill and send off the guest and closing procedures. One of the most important elements of success is team spirit. The employees of food and beverage service work as a team while serving. If you like, we would like to start with remembering the job description of each ring in this chain. On the basis of the international and national vocational standards, the Ministry of Culture and Tourism has prepared national vocational standards for tourism, accommodation and food beverage services with the cooperation of the tourism sector within the scope of a protocol made with Vocational Qualifications Institute in order to define the national qualifications and contribute to the certification process. According to these standards, the fifth level service managers are the responsible staff for preparation of food and beverage policies, ensuring coordination among the kitchen, stewarding service and bar, which are connected to the food and beverage unit, coordination of the employees, making sure all the work in the whole department is done according to the rules and regulations of the management. The fourth level service employees are the ones responsible for coordination between the bar and the restaurant and implementation of all activities within the department. The third level service employees are responsible for implementation of all kinds of cleaning and order of service areas and everything from greeting until sending off of a guest. The second level service employees are the ones responsible for all the cleaning and order in the service area, assisting their superiors during service and being a liaison between the kitchen and the dining area. The fourth level bar employees are responsible for alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks, hot and cold drinks, preparation and offering of snacks, cleaning and order of the bar. As for the busboys, they are responsible for preparing the bar for service cleaning of the bar and all the duties their superior gives them. The feast banquet director is responsible for all the feasts, invitations, meetings and congregations that are held at the hotel. In the hospitality services, different uniforms are worn in order to show which level and section of service an employee belongs to. As a service employee, we need to make sure that the uniforms are clean and ironed, 
the shoes are rubber soled, low heeled, shine, and clean. A clean uniform and items that we might need, such as a needle, thread, and a shoe polish, should be kept in your lockers all the time. We should have matches, pen, order book, service napkin, corkscrew, crumb collector, comb, and napkin on you. However, We should carry them in a way that they don't bulge in our pockets. Towels used for serving hot plates should be hung from our left arm, and when not in use, they should never be put in pockets. For personal maintenance, we should have a comb and napkin. In the food and beverage service area, hygiene and sanitation of the staff. Service area and food is extremely important. As employees, we need to pay attention to the cleanliness of our body, hand, mouth, and nose, and to our hair and skin care. During the work hours, we should not overdo makeup and should not wear any jewelry except wedding ring and watch. We should make sure to wear a clean and ironed uniform. The service areas should be cleaned regularly. The floors should be kept clean and dry. And the tools you use should be rinsed in high temperatures and dried after washed. We should use separate bins for trash. We should pay attention to the cleanliness of the service tables and do not clean the tables with dirty cloths. Never use any cracked or chipped service items. In order to eliminate bacterial growth, do not keep the food and beverages between 5 and 65 degrees Celsius and serve them as soon as they are prepared. Cold foods should be kept in a cold environment until they are served, and hot foods kept at 65 degrees or above. Leftover and spilled foods must be cleaned right away, and foods shouldn't be held with bare hands. Always use tongs or service napkins for service. For service, the usage of items such as glassware. Porcelain, fabric, metal, and other materials has utmost importance. Restaurant items should be used in accordance with their purpose and should be used carefully in order not to damage them. We shouldn't use cracked or chipped glass or porcelain items, and we should take measures against cracks and breaks. We should hold and leave these items properly. Glasses should be stored upside down on trays or on shelves. And shouldn't be used putting one on top of another. We should consider hygiene rules while using all the items. We should be careful not to fold fabrics after using, and always replacing the old items with new ones. We need to have sufficient amount of stock, and we should take precautions against dust for storage. When using porcelain items, be careful in order to prevent breakage. Don't stack the plates on top of each other if they don't have the same shape. Each set should be used with its own plate and lid. Then, how do we carry the plates? Full plates should be carried straight without touching the food, and they should be held flat and secure. We should put the plates on the table from the right of the guest. Do remember that we should put and take away the salad and bread dishes from the left of the guest. In order not to burn our hands, don't forget to use service towels when holding hot plates. Removing plates requires just as much attentiveness as serving them. First, we need to make sure that the guests have finished their meal, and then, after politely asking the guests if they will carry on. Take the plate without disturbing the guest and clear off plates out of the guest's view. After the main course and just before the dessert, don't forget to clean the crumbs from the table either with a clean cloth or crumb device. When clearing off the dishes, take only as much as you can carry at one time. We should carry dirty dishes to service tables and trays, and kitchen counter, as the same sorts placed on top of another, and. During sorting the dishes, try not to make noise. 
We should carry the tray with our left hand in balance and should keep a napkin on the tray in order for items not to slip off. Place heavy and long items in the middle of the tray while the rest is placed out of spaces in balance. Light and small trays can be carried on our fingers, the ones with medium weight on the palm and arm, and the heavy ones on palm and arm with help of the other hand. We should bend our knees when lifting or putting down heavy trays. We shouldn't lean the tray against our body. It should be carried at shoulder or chest level. We should always carry the glasses on a surface plate or on trays. The only time we can carry the glasses with our hands is when we are preparing the service. Spice utensils should be stored in appropriate places when not in use and they should be clean, polished and filled before use. When setting the table, salt and pepper should be the only spices at the table. The others should be brought on request. Spice utensils should be dried with a cloth that doesn't leave any lint and spots behind and should never be filled when they are damp. Now, let us take a look at preparation of the temporary service such as main service, moving service and garrisons. All service should have the capacity to answer the general needs. And the plan of placing tools and equipment should be exactly the same for all of the servants. Service should always be clean and organized. Service vehicles should be cleaned and polished before tools and equipment are placed. If we are using a heater that uses fuels, we should not forget to refill it. If there is hot and cold elements, we should prepare them close to the time of service. Service vehicles shouldn't be pulled, they should be pushed in the direction you go. And napkins. The size of napkins changes according to usage. Tea, food and service napkins must always be clean, starched and pressed. We have to be sure that our hands are clean when folding napkins. We shouldn't fold used napkins. Setting a tablecloth requires the same kind of discretion. Before you put the tablecloth over, you need to make sure that the table is steady. We should pick a tablecloth which is clean and proper sized and is not ripped. We should also pick a fleece cover cloth. When laying the tablecloth, you need to be careful with iron marks. On square tables, iron marks should go parallel to the sides of the table and the middle line should be in the middle of the table. For feast tables and long tables, one tablecloth should be spread over another tablecloth opposing the door. So far, we have learned how to use materials to give excellent service. Now it's time for table services in different types of service plates. If you have put the tables in their place before opening the service, have put the tablecloths on the tables, have placed the chairs as they touch the hems of the tablecloth, have put the service dishes about a finger's length from the edge of the table, centering the chair, have set the dishes as their ambles facing 12 o'clock, have placed the forks, knives and spoons on both sides of the plates as the ones used with the right hand on the right side and the ones used with the left hand on the left side and, as their ends are fingers length from the edge of the table, have placed the forks pointing up and the knives as their sharp side facing the service plate. That means you have successfully completed the preliminary work of an excellent service. What needs to be on the table will vary according to the kind of setting you're serving. Now, let's have a look at different kinds of settings and the attentiveness they require. If we are preparing an a la carte setting, a tablecloth, a service plate, a napkin, a large fork, a knife, a bread plate, butter knives, a water glass, a seasoning set, a vase and a chandelier can be found on the table according to the principles of the enterprise. If we are preparing a tableau setting, there could be found a tablecloth, a service plate, a napkin, an appropriate fork, knife and spoon set, a water glass, a seasoning set, a vase and a chandelier on the table according to the principles of the enterprise. 
While you are preparing the setting, you should not forget to place the fork, knife and spoon set that is going to be used first to the outward. The fork, knife and spoon set that is going to be used lastly to the inward. In other words, you should prepare the setting inside out flow. In order not to encounter any problems during the fees, the best thing for a supervisor to do is to set up a sample setting and show it to the service staff. Reservation of banquet feasts should be made in a written agreement by filling up reservation form in advance. The important thing here is to set prices for alternative menus and to make preparations for feast lounges and table orders. When preparing a feast, the food should be the kind that they could be prepared in advance and kept for some time. You need to consider the time and theme of the feast, ages, religious beliefs and habits of diet of the guests. Seating arrangements should be made according to the type of feast. If the distribution of tasks have been made in advance, tools and equipment have been cleaned and polished, tables and chairs have been put in their position according to the plan, Tablecloths have been properly placed on the tables. Tables have been set according to the menu. Guest members have been put according to the seating plan. Plans have been placed for decoration. Preparations such as light and sound has been done by the technical service. Dance floor, cake area and placement of the orchestra has been set according to the floor plan. Space for the buffet has been set. Heating elements and room temperature has been checked. That means you have prepared an impeccable fee. Congratulations! You have successfully handled another few meal and you're probably very tired. But our training is not yet over. What's coming up next is the types of menus. Let us take a look at those delicious menus together. The table dot menu is a restricted menu with a number of foods and it can be repeated periodically till the season changes. The guests don't have a choice of food with a table dot menu. A la carte menu literally means according to the menu. It covers more than table dot menus do and the guests can choose their own food. With an a la carte menu, first the order is taken and then the food is prepared. What about breakfast menus? Breakfast menus are classified as continental, English, American and Turkish, according to the types of food and beverages they contain. No matter what type of breakfast we prepare, we should always remember to place hot water, tea, bread toaster, bread and pastries, freshly squeezed fruit juices, concentrated drinks first in the breakfast hall. We should not forget to check the preparations at the restaurant and the service stations. As soon as the guest arrives, we are supposed to tend to the guest and bring the food and beverage before they get cold. Apart from the menus mentioned before, there are other types of menus. The ones served late at night is called supper menu, the ones with light food and served between lunch and dinner is called afternoon tea menu. The ones delivered to the guests in their rooms is called room service menu. Feast menu is also called banquet menu. We should always keep in mind that the menu cards which include the food and beverage served should be kept clean and organized and also the old cards should be replaced with the new ones. Now, everything is ready. It's time for greeting our guests and presenting our table. If you know our guests' names, we can call them with their first and the last names. If we don't, do say, Sir, Madam. Make an eye contact and smile. If the organization makes reservations, we need to find out whether they have it. If they do, we ask for their reservation names and accompany them towards the table. After taking the guests to a clean and prepared table, we help them to be seated by pulling the chair out for them. After introducing the guests to their server, 
We wish them to spend a good time and leave the table. The service should speak and act in the same manner. While serving, our position is very important. We should not intervene the guests sitting next to each other and talking. If there is no chance to reach them, we should service without disturbing the guests after asking for permission. We shouldn't disturb them by getting too close. Leave some space between you and the guest, and approach the guest from the right side with the right foot, or from the left side with the left foot. Greet the guest with a smile and sincere gestures. Present the first page already opened menu to the guest from their right side. If the enterprise serves appetizers and the guests are willing, we serve the appetizers first and give the menu afterwards. The children are always served first, then the elderly, then the women, and finally the men. While guests are looking at the menu, we can serve the water, bread, and butter. Now let's take a detailed look at water and bread service. While serving water, we should have a paper napkin in our left hand and pour the water from right side of the guest. While passing to the next guest, wipe the excess water from the pitcher. If we serve the water from a bottle. We first open the bottle inside of the guest. When pouring from a bottle or a pitcher, don't touch the glass and don't fill it to the rim. We serve the bread from the left in bread baskets or service plates. Bread should be placed on a service plate with a flat or an inverted tongue, depending on the bread type. And after the service is finished, the tongue should be put back in the basket. By the way. Let us remind you of how you can use the tongue. When serving with the tongue, you should be careful so as not to spoil the shape of the food. Use a flat tongue for sliced foods and inverted tongues for round foods. If you're serving foods with sauces, use the spoon part of the tongue to serve the sauce. And when serving pureed foods, take the food with a spoon first and then scrape the food with a fork onto the plate. After remembering all these necessary pieces of information, we can take the order. When taking an order, we always face the guests. Try to remember the selling techniques and don't bend over to the table or chair. Do not forget to repeat the order to be certain. After taking the food and beverage order, we can start serving. When we realize the guest is done, you can excuse yourself and take the empty plates, and then you can set the utensils to serve the second round of food. Serve hot foods on a hot plate and cold foods on a cold plate. If there are garnishes or sauces, don't forget to serve it with the food. Don't also forget to clear off the crumbs after the main course. Now, we can serve the dessert. After the dessert is finished, we can take away the empty plates and start serving coffee or liquors. Now has arrived the coffee. This has been an excellent dinner service. We can take the payment when the guest asks for the bill, or when we realize they don't want anything else. The tab kept during the meal should be checked over before handing the bill to the guest. The bill should be put on the table from the right side of the guest. The guests might also want to eat in their room instead of restaurant. The guests who prefer room service can place their order by phone to an order taker with the help of an in-room menu. After taking the order by phone, you can send the foods with room service personnel. Once you get the tray or the cart until the door of the room, check the room number or the one on the bill, and then knock on the door to get permission and enter the room. We place the service cart in the middle of the room, by the window or near the bed on request of the guest, and 
we may surf if asked. Then we have the guest sign the bill. Before leaving the room, do say, "Enjoy your meal." Later on, give the bill to the order taker. Each alcoholic and non-alcoholic beverages served to the guests in hotels have specialized service methods. Let us start with fresh tea to warm up a little. While serving tea, we should cover the tray with a cloth, prepare the pots for service, and serve sugar, hot water, or milk on request. Do not forget to put the pots on the table mat after the service. For the coffee service, you should put a cloth on the tray first, and then the coffee pot, hot milk pot, cream pot, and sugar. You should serve from the right. Try not to touch the pot to the cups, and do not fill the cup to the rim. When serving mineral water or soda, place the glasses on the table on the right of the guest first, and then open the bottle with a bottle opener on sight of the guest. After filling the glass from the right side of the guest, place the bottle to the right, where the guest can easily have access to. Beer should be served at six to seven degrees in a chilled glass. Be careful so as not to foam too much. At wine service, clean the bottle first. Put a folded napkin in your left hand and hold the wine in your right hand, as the label can be seen. Present the wine to the guest first, and then pour a little from the right side. We wait for the guest to taste the wine, and then pour the correct amount of wine according to its type. When the service is done, if there is any left over, place the bottle back on the garden. If not, place it on the nearest servant desk. Raki is served with water or soda in a raki glass. Gin with tonic water, ice and lemon slices, whiskey with water or soda, tequila with salt and lemon. Vodka should be served cold and plain. Beverages that help digestion, like cognac, should be served in balloon or long tulip glasses, and liquors should be served in small glasses. Evidently, it is important where beverages are stored and how they are prepared. For this reason, cleanliness of the bar floors, counters, and shelves has utmost importance. Glasses should be checked for size, count, and cleanliness. Bottle stocks should be regularly checked, and bottles should be stored on shelves in an orderly fashion. You should check the freshness of the items you use before closing up the bar. Check the used bottles and put them back into their places. Clean the tools and equipment and put them back into their places as well. Clean the counters and shelves. Turn off the electrical instruments, and then check everything for the last time before turning off the lights. Do not forget that eating and drinking are everyone's needs, but to make this need enjoyable is up to you.